actually know for a fact that you guys have seen the first three episodes, and I have not. So there are things that you know that I don't. <laughs> so how is you get to play Dim Mother to the creepiest kids ever. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? Mama Bear and her cubs. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty lucky. I mean, these new assistants, this new family that Kelly has, they do her bidding, they do all the dirty work, and, you know, and they, as performers, are also so incredibly gifted, physically, and just the sweetest personalities. I couldn't believe how dark the subject matter was and how much fun we had on set. When Carlton told me what was happening in the second episode, I thought, how am I going to sleep at night? How am I going to live with myself? And came the day, we just had so much fun, and the kids know it's make-believe, and they love the makeup, and it was just a ton of fun to work with them in season one. Like for you, then the makeup kind of thing, getting spending those extra hours getting ready to shoot. I love it. Um, it's four and a half hours. I talk the whole time. <laughs> I'm not claustrophobic. I'm a people person. And the people that we work with in special effects makeup are so great. And we get to spend many hours together, as you know. And um, I feel like their artistry makes the job so much easier. You know, the, I'm not that scary as a person, but when they're done with me, I certainly am. And VFX, adding in the stinger, is also very helpful. And the sound effects are some really interesting arachnoid, insectoid sounds that we that we have when we move, especially the children. And they just do so much of the work for you. They make their jobs so much easier. And we get to show up and have fun. Does the show give you nightmares? Not at all. <laughs> and I scare very easily. I am not a horror girl. I, I believe in evil. I believe in ghosts. I believe in... In, in energy, and there are bad people in this world, but I've checked with Guillermo and he's assured me that there are no vampires. <laughs> <laughs> because I asked him, how is it that so many different countries around the world for so many years have this shared story, this shared fable and folklore that has permeated for so many decades? Is there some truth to it? And he said, no. <laughs> Ghosts, yes. Vampires, no. So, I've been told by the expert that we're, we're okay. <laughs> yeah, we're safe. Are we going to find out uh, why exactly the master has chosen Kelly for this particular purpose? I think it's her closeness to her son and, and Zach's proximity to the very band of vampire hunters. And he wants to get to the group of them and knowing that Kelly will stop at nothing to get to Zach. To help him, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm offering him eternal life. What's Zach offering him? I feel like he's vulnerable, he's not protected, he's in danger, and she wants to connect with him in the only new way that she knows how. And I think it's quite tragic, and she's relentless this season, will stop at nothing. And the master knows that, and he's looking to exploit that in every way he knows, which is why he's bestowed his new family upon her to help her in her mission. She's not only doing his bidding, but her own. So you think that even that in her mind, even though she's controlled by the master, that she still has feelings for that? Like, Absolutely. Like, like good feelings for that and that? It's a void. I mean, if you could ever imagine the horror of losing a child, if your child was missing, and the void, and you'll stop at nothing until you find him or her and know what happens. And I think... She also has access to memories and things that will help her in her mission. And there may be new ways of experiencing feelings, but Strigoi, highly functioning ones like i course like Kelly, do have somewhat of an emotional palette. Obviously, i course is far more sophisticated than Kelly at this point. She's still a fairly newly turned vampire. But as the season progresses, um, there is a, um, a deeper well to draw upon. Are we going to see you physically transform more, or, or is this it for now? The flesh only continues to rot, which means an extra 15 minutes of layers <laughs> in the chair, and the hair, you know, there's a, there's a few left on top of the head. But physically, working with the choreographer, Roberto Campanella, I worked so hard in the first season to figure out how to twitch, and then this season, okay, not, not so twitchy. You know, she's a little more settled in her new rotting skin. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like the first time you looked at yourself in full rotting skin makeup? It never ceases to amaze me. You start to desensitize as it's applied, and then you step away for a bit, and when you get to set, that's when they put in the contacts and the teeth. And I'm often caught in a glimpse of myself in a reflection, and 
I was scared myself. I just, I forget how horrifying I look. My brother came to set one night, and I've saw, I've seen, I've seen photos, and he's seen the show. And yet when he got there, he could not look at me. And I forget what I look like. I'm hey, brother, hug and a kiss. He's like, he had to avert his eyes for a good 20 minutes. And I have to remember that at lunchtime. I'll just sit myself down and get up in everyone's face and chat while they're eating, forgetting that not everyone wants to look at me with food in their mouth. <laughs> yeah.